I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Chris Perry, who's the president of Broadridge Financial Solutions, and Jim Fanning, who's the director of global financial services at Amazon Web Services. Gentlemen, it is a pleasure to see you both. I would say hello in Dutch, but I don't know the word for that. Do you? Uh, no, I'll just say good day. Okay, that, that sounds reasonably enough. Pleasure to be here with you. <laughs> Fantastic. Look, it's good to see you both. But look, Chris, let's start first with you, because going back in time, not too far back in time, we spoke to Tim Gokey, who's the CEO of Broadbridge. And a lot has happened since we had that conversation, because basically you've been shopping, okay? You're onboarding your biggest acquisition. I'm talking about Itaviti. So for those of you who don't know what Itaviti is, it's a front office trading and connectivity provider. What I'm getting at here is why? What was the reason behind that transaction? Apart from getting bigger, there was, there was more to it than that. Juliet, it's great to be here with you at a very vibrant Cybos 2022. We're back, the industry is alive again, so it's great. And I think that aligns very well with what we've done. So about 18 months ago, we did a $2.6 billion transaction to buy Itivity. And um, our whole thesis was that the front, middle, and back office is disjointed. And no company or supplier has been able to put that together in an efficient way. And we already had a very strong settlements business. We thought that global connectivity and liquidity would really be a nice pair in our franchise. And we're really excited by what we've done here. We now call it Broadridge Trading and Connectivity Solutions. And it pairs really well with our capital markets franchise that settles $9 trillion of trades a day. All right. So this is a, a game changer for the company. Could it potentially be a game changer beyond? Well, we really believe that transformation is something that people talk about. But the fact of the matter is it's pretty scary. And this capability set will allow us to partner and innovate with our clients to make sure that this straight through processing that people have been looking for for years can come to fruition. There's so much spaghetti and casserole, as I call it, and people realize that they've been bolting things on for years. This will allow us to optimize. It will allow us to create global connectivity. It widens the footprint of a single capital markets firm that can serve multiple asset classes. And as we get into the growth in asset classes with tokenization, NFTs, crypto, again, a platform that provides liquidity, provides global connectivity, and settlement is really what the market's after. Right, so more spaghetti and casserole going further on down the line, but in, in a more joined way. Yeah, well, we, <laughs> really what we'll do is we'll have it already integrated, as opposed to they keep bolting on these things that have created kind of a Frankenstein. Mm. Yeah. And we're leveraging AWS substantially sure. in their ubiquitous access for content, and that's really powerful. And I think what's really important is it helps firms grow. Mm. There's some real cost optimization that happens in there, but cost cutting is finite, growth is infinite, and people are really competing for market. Yeah, because basically it joins everything together. It gives a smoothness to that. It helps the businesses to grow. But look, you know, you are a strategic partner to many capital markets firms globally. So given that relationship and this acquisition, what are the insights that you can share with our viewers about evolving market conditions and also the conflux of, of headwinds and opportunities? Because there is so much happening out there. The big word, of course, is uncertainty. Well, let's just start with democratization. I mean, that is very real. And the Queen this morning in the opening remarks at Cybos talked about how finance and banking has to get available to everyone. On the back side of that is capital markets has to be enabling that. And it has to be cost effective because the margin pressures of what is really zero cost trading is going to create big problems for their ability to, to reinvest. The other dynamic is the pace of change is very fast. And you have regulatory dynamics that are moving really quickly. So that's kind of a perfect storm. My perspective is it's about partnering. Partner with Broadridge, I hope, but the right organization to help you bring innovation, co-development, intellectual property, and, and share it. We, we mutualize a lot of what the costs are because we do it for the industry, and that's a great opportunity for firms to actually transform in an evolutionary way, not in a revolutionary way. Jim, come into the conversation because, look, mm -hmm. so much in what Chris said, and for me, one of the big words which stood out was the R word, regulation. It's yeah. all very well and good to bring everybody together, but at the same time, it is going to raise questions about how regulated the market is to actually accommodate some of these big acquisitions. Mm -hmm. And I want to focus as well, or just bring into the conversation the G20 trade and transaction reporting regulations. They're being rolled out across many jurisdictions. So that's going to raise questions in itself about the viability so that everybody can get on board and stay on the right side of things. And that's the point. How can firms actually tackle this in a strategic way, sure. bearing in mind they have to take the regulation on board. And if they get it wrong, 
inadvertently, it can potentially cause reputation damage. Absolutely. So the regulatory reporting requirements on financial institutions is increasing with G20 and beyond. And Chris just mentioned ubiquitous access to data. I think that's really key because when you think about how financial institutions are meant to solve for these regulatory requirements, we're asking them to look around corners, right, and see things in the future. Uh, you can't do that without automation. And this is what it's all built upon about. So, uh, you know, a lot of our customers are building what we call data lakes, but again, it goes, goes back to this idea of ubiquitous access, access to data. And then building AI and machine learning algorithms on, on top of that to be able to, you know, I, again, see into the future. So that's that's what we're seeing. Yeah, and of course, when you talk about these data lakes, that's always yeah. the problem, isn't it? That yeah. it's nice to have data, but if you have too much data, it can potentially bog down a business. Absolutely. And, you know, you have structured and unstructured data sets. You have to merge them all, but that's really what a data lake is meant to accomplish. And, uh, you know, we think that with cloud providers like AWS, we're giving companies the power to do that where they didn't have that before. Yeah, and also separate, please do that. Yeah, well, I, I was gonna say, and let's add in the cyber risks. That's not yes. regulatory. Yeah. yeah. The cyber risks come into play, and why we partner with AWS was their global footprint was well beyond anyone else's, and the investments they were making in cybersecurity and protection was well beyond the largest banks. So for us, that was a great place for us to be able to create our data set and you know, one of the things that's really important for firms to be optimized and efficient is to use a common data model and to use integration layers that can talk through APIs. We've done that with something called BRX. BRX is, a, is kind of a standardization and it runs on AWS. So you have the ability to leverage this ubiquitous access cost effectively, and then you can turn up regions when you need to. So it's a really great partnership that we have, mm. it's quite powerful. But it's worked very, very well and congratulations on that. But, but Chris, I, I want you to, to give me your take to this question and also Jim from the yeah. technologist perspective. But sure. look, you know, we can talk about how these strategies are great, et cetera, but at the same time, you want to increase agility, reduce costs and mitigate risks. So how does it do that from from your point of view as the user and from your perspective as the provider? Mm -hmm. Well, let me start first with, there's a lot of bespoke systems out there and they're bespoke and they get very expensive to maintain. And the idea of being on a standardized platform for the industry that offers API, web, web services API tool sets to allow you to integrate your own capabilities and components and other third parties, that's a way to deal with a lot of the complexity that firms have. The other thing is inside firms, they're very siloed and mm. each department does kind of their thing. That's extremely expensive. Yeah, they are their own communities, risky. aren't they? They are, they are in communities. <laughs> so really what we need to do is have horizontal integration to work across the firms and then verticalization that goes deep. Our acquisition allows us to go deep in global connectivity, deep <coughs> in liquidity, deep in settlements. And that's kind of part of why you pick the partner that can help you get to the next level. Yeah, yeah I would agree. And with Capital markets transformation, of course, you could do it as a big bang, and we do have customers doing that. But more, more importantly, or more frequently, we're seeing institutions refactor, and, and that's exactly what Broadridge did. You look at your set of applications, and you analyze which ones are good fits to either rehost, replatform, retire. Um, but refactor takes advantage of the existing applications, and then makes them, you know perform better in the cloud and, and really gain agility, cost savings, and speed to market. Yeah. So you can transform yeah. and then you can innovate. We, we've built a platform called DLT Repo mm -hmm. and it's purely a distributed ledger technology capability. It's really efficient. We're already doing $5 billion a day in the repo market, which is much larger, but it's early days. So you get the best of both words, worlds, refactoring things you've done yeah. and very quick innovation to bring to market. Mm. I mean, you touched on this in your, your answer, mm. your, uh, uh, Jim, about the, the big bang all in one approach. And, yeah. and it really leads quite nicely to, to the next question I was going to put to you basically mm. in terms of the transformation approach. I mean, can it really be boiled down to one line of strategy or, or is it really a case of look we have to work to take what works with us as a company what works with one doesn't necessarily work with another oh that's an absolutely true statement right we always start with our, our customers business objectives and work backwards from there so inherently what are you trying to accomplish and sometimes yes it is big bang you know especially if you have a compelling event like a data center closure that's around the corner but more frequently, it's analyzing each application and, and what the companies want to achieve from a business perspective. Okay, guys, sadly, time is the enemy, but I think we really got to the heart of the subject. Do you think so? 
I think we nailed it. Thank you. Thanks to you. Fantastic. Julia. Well, you know what? Even if you said we hadn't, I'm still not going to give you the extra time to continue <laughs> to nail it. So never mind. But look, Jim. <laughs> we'll hope to be invited back again. Yeah, indeed. I'm sure. Well, you, it's secured. You asked nicely, so it's going to be granted to you. But guys, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to both of you. Enjoy you. Cybos, and hopefully we'll catch up again. Indeed. Next year. I may have to separate you both, though, because I can see that you're, you're like <laughs> naughty boys. But thank you so much for that. We'll thank you. There. Thank you.